Ratings agencies S&P and Moody's have said that nothing less than $4 trillion in spending cuts would allow the U.S. to keep its AAA rating. But with cuts only worth about half that amount, uh, how imminent is a downgrade, do you think? Well, whether they downgrade it or not officially, it's downgrading itself. Just look, for instance, what's happened to gold prices since this charade began to take place on the Beltway, this budget battle. Gold has gone up over $120 an ounce. The whole world knows what's going on. I heard your Prime Minister Putin say that the United States is acting like a bunch of parasites. And that's what this is when it comes to the dollar. So, so sorry, can you explain why, why have the gold prices skyrocketed so much so, uh, so quickly? Well, because it's a devaluation of the dollar. It's been going on for a long time, but they're not calling it a devaluation. What they're doing is they're flooding the world markets with cheap dollars, just as the Europeans are doing with cheap euros. So the more the product is out there, the less valuable it is. So it's a de facto devaluation. But in real terms, again, when you see gold prices skyrocketing, that's what it means. The dollar isn't worth the digital paper it's not printed on. All right, now uh, let's uh, keep our focus here to this uh, last minute ditching, uh, raising of the debt ceiling here. I mean, it really was a last minute deal that uh, U.S. Law lawmakers finally uh, stopped bickering and got on with it. But, ha but how does uh, all of this political wrangling in Washington impact on America's reputation with investors? Well, you know, what's a reputation? A reputation is by what you deliver. The United States can't deliver. The United States can't deliver on its wars. It loses wars, whether in Iraq, Afghanistan, the war on drugs, the new war with Libya. They're losers, the, the uh, government, at everything that they touch. Look at all the trillions of dollars, the tens of trillions, that have been pumped into the system since the panic of 08 struck by the Federal Reserve, by D.C. with its stimulus bailouts too big to fails. Everything they do, they turn to failure. Why would any thinking adult Look at the Republicans and the Democrats, the inept and the incompetents, to come up with a program that's going to salvage the nation. Investors having confidence, looking to the same people that caused the problem to resolve it. That's called insanity. Chairman, All right. Now, uh, when, when you were mentioning uh, that ultimately the American people are going to bear the brunt of whatever cuts truly are put into effect, um, one might question, uh, why, why put cuts in the public sector, for example, when the U.S. military, which is uh, the biggest military budget in the world, in fact, the combination of the entire world uh, put together there, why doesn't America just cut on its wars and on its massive, massive defense spending? Because the business of America, when I used to be a young man, it used to be business. Now the business of America is war. And you can see by the new ones that Obama started and the old ones that he keeps going. And you would just listen to General Dwight D. Eisenhower, arguably, you know, one of the, you know, a five star general, the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in Europe during World War II, two term Republican president. And he warns the American people that the military industrial complex is taking over the country. What more proof do you need, Rory? Now we have the former General Petraeus, who is the brains behind the new Afghan surge. Now he's heading the CIA. So the whole thing is defense and war. It's the American mindset of the ruling military that's in charge. All right, if I, if I may just jump in just for a moment here, uh, going back to the issue of raising the debt ceiling here uh, with, with, uh, with the US politicians, um, from, from what I've read, raising the debt ceiling is only going to uh, stave off default for six months. What happens after six months? Do we go through all of this again? The American economy, as well as much of the global economy, is heading into the greatest depression. Anything, everything that they're doing is not going to salvage it. If you have a third mortgage, it's like taking out a fourth and a fifth. So what, now just let's add this up. What is this going to do by cutting back? How is that going to create more jobs? How is it when you have 25 million people that are working not at all or have part-time jobs? How is that going to fix the real estate problem? Which by the way, the prices have fallen more dramatically since 2007, since the Great Depression of the 1930s. How is it going to fix the trade deficit problem? It's not. The Great Depression is underway, and all they're doing is trying to make it look as though they have a plan to stave it off. They're not going to. 
Gerald Salento from the Trends Research Institute and publisher of the Trends Journal. Thank you. Thank you.